touch or sensation is basically the ability to sense pressure, vibration, or temperature against skin and or hair. Being able to feel the world around you helps alert you to what is going on in your immediate vicinity. Many mammals have specialized hairs called whiskers which extend their touch ability even further. Animals navigate their immediate surroundings partly based on touch, especially in the dark. Touch helps a cat determine exactly where the prey item in front of her is, and it helps inform her of how she needs to move to totally subdue that animal. Touch is essential for proper violence and killing in the animal world. Kitty needs to know how much pressure to apply to break that mouse's neck or back. Touch is also used as a form of communication, especially in social animals. Gentle touching and cuddling with an animal you love releases oxytocin, the bonding hormone, and endorphins, the feel-good chemicals. This solidifies your relationship with one another by giving you a burst of happy chemicals when you touch in a pleasant way. Touch can inform an animal of temperature, texture, and the character of a surface. Humans have especially sensitive nerves in their hands. This is why you can discern so many textures with your fingertips. Your fingertips can detect characteristics of a surface invisible to your eyes. A relatively smooth looking stone may actually be quite rough to the touch. Whiskers are basically a superpower. One of the videos you assigned this week about is about cat whiskers. You will learn how truly awesome they are. Your skin is the main organ by which you feel the world. Skin, hair, scales, and feathers are all a part of the integumentary system. The image shows a hair follicle within mammalian skin. Mammals tend to be greasy creatures. Special glands in the skin secrete sweat, mucus, or oils to help condition and protect the skin or for thermoregulation in the case of sweat. Hair is composed of keratin, as are nails and horns. Antlers are composed of bone. Mammals have several different types of hair. Whiskers are one specialized hair type. Within a dog or a cat's coat, they may have downy and guard hairs. Downy hairs are soft hairs close to the skin to help insulate the animal. The downy hairs compose the undercoat. Guard hairs make up the top coat, and as their name implies, these hairs function to protect the animal. They are stiffer and coarser than downy hairs. Depending on the breed, a dog may have only one of the hair types present. Single-coated breeds have only guard hairs. Double-coated breeds have both types of hair. Short-haired breeds may either be single-coated or they mo may have both types of hair. If they do have down hairs, they are usually in a reduced quantity than in a longer-haired breed. Most long-haired breeds have both types of hair. Hair grows from follicles in the dermis. Reptiles and fish both have scales, but they aren't exactly the same. Let's start with the fish. Fish have different types of scales depending on the species. Most species of fish we keep as pets have cycloid or stenoid scales. These scales overlap and have a high calcium and collagen content, so they are both strong and somewhat elastic. They form from the dermis layer and lie underneath the epidermis. These scales have growth rings like a tree. While they do not necessarily occur annually, and the timing of the rings differ among species, they can be used to estimate the age of the fish. They grow as the fish grows. The skin is covered in a protective layer of mucus, which helps lubricate the fish in the water. Protect it also protects it from abrasion and infection and helps it avoid predation. Fish have a special organ in their skin which gives them a super sense. This organ is called the lateral line. The lateral line allows fish to detect water vibration and changes in pressure. You can see the lateral line here in this goldfish. It's this small series of what appear to be holes in the scales. The lateral line helps keep the fish balanced and it helps them detect movement in the water. So it is kind of like a specialized form of the touch sense. Hundreds of millions of years ago, the common ancestor for reptiles, mammals, and birds had scale-like body structures. Recently, scientists have discovered that mammalian hair, reptile scales, and bird feathers are all modification of this original scale. Interesting stuff. 
Reptile scales are also formed from keratin, just like nails, and they are formed in the epidermis, unlike fish scales. Reptile scales have evolved to keep the animal from losing water since they live on dry land. Different types of scales serve different functions. The spines on an iguana help protect it and are used in display behaviors. The scales on a snake's belly help it move by gripping onto imperfections in the surfaces. The scales may overlap, as in most lizards and snakes, or they may adjoin, as they do in turtles. Overlapping scales have a hinged area to allow for greater flexibility, such as shown in this diagram here. A turtle shell is covered in adjoining scales, often called scutes. Turtles also have a special bony layer beneath the shell called the osteoderm. The osteoderm layer is fused to form the bony shell structure. This layer is not present in all reptiles, but some lizards and crocodilians also have it. If you see here, in this diagram, this would be the osteoderm layer here. The scales on a reptile don't grow, so its skin has to be shed for the old scales to make way for the new ones. Scutes on a turtle are not shed. They are enlarged with additional keratin. Reptiles usually shed in bits and pieces except for snakes. Snakes get it all out of the way in one go. Reptiles may shed as often as every four to six weeks, and infrequent shedding, especially in juveniles, is a cause for concern. Never try to peel off the shedding skin. That can damage the new skin underneath. If your reptile has experienced problems shedding, a trip to the vet is in order. The origin of feathers is a fascinating story which begins back in the time of the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are thought to have been the first creatures with feathers. Birds are now thought to have descended from them. There are several categories of feather, all with their own modified structure. The categories are shown in the diagram on the left. From the left to right, the types are tail, wing or flight, contour, semi-plume, down, bristle, and phyloplume. Every bird will have multiple types of feather on its body in different locations. Here we will look at the ba basic feather structure. The diagram shows a wing or a flight feather. Feathers are composed of beta keratin and they have a branching structure. The two structural types of feather are plumulaceous and pennaceous. Plumulaceous feathers are fluffy and trap heat. Pennaceous feathers are flat and interlocked to form a barrier. Some feathers will have both a plumulaceous and pennaceous component, with the plumulaceous part occurring near the body and the pennaceous portion occurring towards the tip of the feather. Feathers serve to protect the bird, provide coloration, aid in courtship, and assist with flight or swimming. Feathers must be replaced regularly due to wear and tear. They are replaced in a process known as molting, Molting can be partial or full, and it can take place once or more times a year. These both depend on what species of bird is doing the molting. Birds have to time molts carefully because making new feathers takes a lot of energy, and the loss of feathers can put them at a serious disadvantage. So whether or not an animal has feather, hair, or scales, they all use these integumentary organs to help them sense the world around them. 